The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the February 10th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at tfnn.com. But inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, makes it much easier for me to find your emails from somebody else's. That would be greatly appreciated. Of course, uh, if you're in the Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show, a bit of a mixed bag out here. The only U.S. indice trading to the upside, other than spot VIX, is the Russell 2000. She's up 10 points, trade out of 2093. The Dow's off 238, the S&P's off 37, NASDAQ 100, 167, semis are up 24, trading's down 59. You've got the XAU off 30 cents, gold is off a buck, silver's up 19 pennies, lights recruit up 81 cents, natural gas is off 3 cents, and the 30 year treasury printing out at 151.15. That's back with nearly uh, two full points, one in 26, 30 seconds. Leading the charge, oh, you got the wrong screen. Sorry about that. Or I've got the wrong screen. Hey, where's that two by four, Mr. Bill? No, is it it's Dan in Boston. He's got the he's got the real icon of the two by four. Sorry about that, folks. We'll get to the proper screen out here. Makes it a little bit easier. Uh, lead the charge dollar wise to the upside. You've got Data Dog, 24 points, O'Reilly Automotive, 22. Can't pronounce that next one. MDB up 17. SBB Financial 15. Mercado Libre up 11. To the downside auto zone. That's a stinger. Nearly 4% or 72 bucks. 45 bucks for Google. Amazon's 38. Zebra Technology 34, which is nearly 7%. And CGen is off 21 bucks or 15%. So we've got plenty of things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to uh, look at. And I'll tell you what we're going to look at first. It's really what are these markets doing? What, you know, where's support and resistance? Where's the flow of the market? What time frame is it that's generating the best flow of signals for you and I? Oh, that was a mouthful out there. Well, I'm going to show that to you. So we're going to get right to the point. The only time frame, the only charts that you really need to focus on to understand what the market is doing. That happens to be the 60-minute chart. So as you know, I pay attention to several intraday time frames out there. And when we get markets like these, what I'm also always trying to determine is what time frame is it that's controlling the market moving? Which one has the best topping signals, if there are any? Which one has the best bottoming signals? Well, it turns out, if we take a look at, now I'm just looking at the top row here. So I'm looking at just the equity markets, not down below with gold, silver, U.S. dollar and lights, we crew. We can take a look at those, but really, I focused on the equity markets out here. And each of them found support this morning at their TD9 count breakout levels. That's the 4522 area in the ES Mini. That's 14770 in the NQ. That's 35406 for the Dow. And it's 205590 for the Russell 2000. Yes, the Russell 2000 closed below that level, 205590 for a short period of time. But it did not get that second consecutive close. These are the key support levels. If you are short or you're thinking about short, then you want to be paying attention to these. If they hold, then 
you know, guess what? This is a form of a consolidation. So to the downside, the ESNQ, the Dow, it's very clear where support is at. It's also clear where resistance is, the top of those profiles. So it's 4582 in the ES mini, it's 15036 in the NQ, and it's 35710 inside of the YM. So now we have this whole thing wedged in here. We know where support and resistance, we know where key levels of support and resistance are for the day. How much is that worth? Eh, not much, probably. Eh, I think a ton. Now we know what's going on inside these markets. So in the Russell 2000, with regard to upside activity, I'm really not sure why it found resistance there. I'm going to go with the fact it found resistance there where it did. Let me see here. Eh? That was at – so really a top came in at about 11 o'clock. Where was that top here? Was that also 11 o'clock? No, it wasn't. So I, I, the Russell's got a mind of its own right now. The support area is real key, 2055.90. So those are levels to be watching to the uh, downside out there. Is there anything interesting as we take a look at 60-minute uh, charts for gold and silver? We can see that the spikes lower held support being their profile levels out there. U.S. dollar index is now trading below a profile area. We can take a look at the larger term time frame. But with regard, it's it's really been simplified, or at least I've tried to simplify things. It's a 60-minute time frame. Maybe you don't have the 60 minutes. Take a picture of this. If you're on Tiger TV, take a picture of this inside the Tiger's Den, and these would be the areas to be watching. Now, if price, if you, good question. I know somebody was saying, hey, Steve-O. If the Dow Equity Future contract for two consecutive bars closed be th close below 35,406, where is price going to run to? Excellent question. You break through one breakout level, you would go to the next, or at least that becomes the target, 34,965. To really answer that question, we need to understand, um, are there any other support areas that could come into play first? Well, those support areas, let's see if I can do this here, presto changeo. This is a little Stevie magic out here without even having to screw anything up. We go to the daily time frame charts. And here on the daily time frame charts, it really becomes those red oscillator and change lines. So I don't remember what the level was that we were talking about in the Dow. But my answer would be also 35, about 35040, which is the top of a profile, which is also its oscillator and change line. So now that we're on the daily time frame charts, any breaks of those TD9 count breakout levels for the 60 minute time frames would then suggest targeting or price targeting their respective daily oscillator and change lines. 44.88 in the ES, 14.601 in the NQ, 35.040 or so in the Dow, and the Russell 2000, you know, would be at the 2002 level. But the Russell is uh, pretty bearish. The, Bru the Russell, but pretty bearish. Did I say bearish? <clears throat> What the Sam heck was I saying? It's pretty bullish. Why is it pretty bullish? Folks, the Russell 2000 is trading above yesterday's high. Now, it did test yesterday's low as well. We're at this stage here, we're going to call that a rejection. None of the other three are trading above yesterday's high. So the Russell 2000, which has a A to B equals C to the upside, not really a confirmed one. When I say confirmed, didn't take out the B point with volume, doesn't really matter. That doesn't mean that an A to B equals C to pattern cannot or will not form. So in this case here, you've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. You've got a TD9 count breakdown level of 2209. The Russell 2000 is very likely headed to 2209.30. That's its TD9 count breakdown area. The only thing that would get in the way of that would be the other three trading below their red oscillator and change line. If you trade, if you trade below red oscillator and change line, that's a signal that sellers are certainly in control and then you look to other support levels so that's what's going on in the equity futures market just pay attention to those 60 minute time frame charts and you'll do just fine we'll be right back steve rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago and the student has now become the master Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com.
TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back up, folks. We got a request inside the Tiger's Den from Jimmy. He wants to take a look at uh, the technology sector for the S and P 500, the XLK out here. And that's what we've got up on our screen. So let me uh, clean this up just a tad out here. So here's what we know: longer term. Well, first, I say that's what, let's let's take a look at the white background charts. We'll come to these uh, black background ones uh, in a few moments if we need to. So on a monthly time frame, as we take a look at this, this has a confirmed TD nine count top. And price is below the oscillator and change line. But what price also did last month, Jimmy, was it came back and it tested support. And support in this case here was the top of its daily profile. When you close above the top of a daily profile, old resistance can become new support. When this monthly profile formed, price was already above it, which was a bullish signal. But when price remains below an oscillator and change line, green just says further retracement. Red says, hey, I'm going to go back and test support again. So since support is held here so far, it doesn't really need to get back down there. Not that it can't. And because price below that green oscillator and change line, longer term says more retracement may still be in order. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, Roach momentum indicator top, price gets down below its weekly profile, gets right back above at the next week. And now we have a new profile. Can you see this profile out here? It's uh, that is uh, actually formed uh, last week. Jimmy, can you see this? Can everybody in the side Tiger's Den see this? In fact, let me do this here. Maybe it's easier to see that one on the black background charts. I think that it is. So let's just do this uh, because this is really important here. Because So look, our role as uh, technicians is to not get married to an idea. We get married to an idea for as long as that idea lasts, meaning if there's new information out there, uh, what am I trying to do here? I need to get to a different part on the screen. If a if new information presents itself, then that old idea that we were married to, you got to divorce yourself from it. You've got to use the new information. Well, that's really what we have here inside the XL key. So, Jimmy, thanks for even asking about this uh, because we get to uh, chat about that. So I'm just going to turn off price. So now you can clearly see the new profile. Now, 
In this case here, we'll just look as profiles form down below. And I'm just coming back here to the 2020 time frame. Here's a bullish structured profile. Where's the next profile form? The bottom is above the prior bottom. The top is above the prior top. Same thing for the next one. Same thing for the next one after that. Then we get into a consolidation, right, with the profiles being with inside themselves. Then back to the bullish move out here where the new profile is above the prior one okay the bottom and the top then we have that same thing taking place here in october the same thing taking place here in january and now we get a new profile that forms basically this week with the bottom being 152 below the old bottom hmm, and the top being 177 above the top of the old one so this is a sign of a consolidation or the intent here simply from a profile standpoint, from a weekly standpoint, is that what the XLK is doing is just really consolidating. So that consolidation pattern here, not the typical type of consolidation, and actually we could draw in a consolidation. There's enough data here to show a, not the profile consolidation, but the one that you're more familiar with. And that's using, I'll just draw it in here real quickly. And so that would look for, for me, it would probably look something more like this would be the, the uh, consolidation area. And uh, so odds favor at this stage here, Jimmy, that on a weekly basis, not, you know, the play by play, what's going on today and tomorrow, but right now, and price is right in the center of this consolidation. So it could go neither direction, to the upside or to the downside. Um, but at this stage here, since the downside of the consolidation is held, this is signaling to and I, the XLK wants to make a run for the top and maybe even the 177.04 level. Okay, so we got that piece out of the way out here. And on the daily chart out here, in essence, yesterday you had a signal of an A to B equals CD because price closed above the B point, 163.98. Now, that B point out there had volume of 12.7 million shares, and yesterday was up with only 8.8 .8 million shares. So not much of a surprise to see that it has uh, failed, at least at this stage. Now, some smart cookie out there, and there could be a bunch of them, uh, is saying, hey, now, wait a minute here, Steve-O. I know about swing points, and I know that that swing point on February 2nd has volume of 12.7 million shares. And I also know that today it's 8.3 million shares. It's not likely to get to 12 million shares. And if price closes below 161.64, and you're trading at 160.94, that's a test and rejection of a swing point and time to head lower. Now, that was an excellent dissertation by uh, whomever was uh, thinking that out there. And that would be true. However, price is still above the top of its daily profile. So I would say hold your horses here because uh, price is above a clear level of resistance. And in essence, I would take that signal information, apply the daily profile information, and say in essence we really have a neutral signal out here with regard to the daily time frame for the XLK. Does that make sense, uh, Jimmy, in taking a look at the XLK from its daily perspective, its weekly perspective, and its monthly perspective? Back to the daily time frame out here. Um, short of closing below its red oscillator and change line of 159.04 odds favor that price wants to go target the 170.10 level so number one sector inside the S&P 500 on a weekly basis an intermediate time frame has generated a um, a consolidation signal because that profile current profile exceeds the low of the prior one and exceeds the high of the prior one as well so I hope that that helps you out uh, next question inside the Tigers Den coming from John ESH to to weekly chart with Taz please bull market uh, now done well okay so John is kind of referring I believe to this panel here and so again John new information is really helpful if we take a look at so the answer was on the week of January 17th price closed below the bottom of its weekly profile very much like it did back here in February 2020 that was a signal of a change in trend that signal lasted up until this week now potentially this week why do I say potentially John I'm using my synthetic symbol it says the ES and one and an exclamation point up there and I'm doing that in order to be able to get the new profiles that are attempting to form this profile will not be confirmed until Sunday but price is now above the bottom of that profile 4331 it really goes along well let me do this here let's go to the ES mini let me do this so now here's the ES mini and if we take a look at it's uh, let me just expand out the weekly chart you know, to see if it's kind of tying out. It's close, but no cigar. 
Um, and what I mean by that is the bottom of the profile exceeds the prior bottom. I just want to go ahead and turn off price. Makes it a little bit easier for everybody that's watching on uh, Tiger TV or inside the Tiger's Den uh, to, to take a look at. So this is a bearish structured profile. Uh, but, you know, I, price is going to have to close below 43.31, John, in order to get back to that um, mode of the uh, bull market is uh, is over. And that actually would tie into a little rising trend line all the way down at the uh, bottom here. So this profile, we have to say the low is below the prior low. Uh, the high is below the prior high. It is suggesting a downward trend out there. Yes. So I think that that I hope that, that answers your question with regard to that. Um, with regard to anything else that might show up inside the ES. You had mentioned just the weekly. So give me a moment here. Yes, uh, 322. And let me get this screen to populate. Now, I just put in the current contract. I might have to put in, John, the continuous contract in order to get the date out here when I get to the weekly. Let's just take a quick peek before we get to that break. Maybe we got lucky out here. Yeah. So um, here's what the ES did do. Yes, it broke through, John, the bottom of that weekly profile, but it didn't break through breakout support. And inside the ES mini, that number to be watched would be 4129. That would then give us the change in trend signal. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading market and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
folks, let's head out to New Buffalo, Michigan with uh, Gary. Gary, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Hey, great. And then how are you, my friend? I am doing well. So I know you called to talk hey, about listen, two instruments. I got to tell you, I am so pumped about this call uh, because the two I'm calling about are going out to at least 100 people as part of an email, this recording of this show. And you <laughs> just rock, as always. What Your work is so amazing. Um, and this call has been up to it, everything, all the questions. So I hope I don't step on anybody, uh, uh, you know, coming in with some other questions. But these two are huge for me because they're my number two and number three biggest holdings, and they're getting okay. bigger. So, okay. Uh, so Palantir is one of them, right? P P L P L T R right. is one of three. them. Oh, that's number okay. two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Palantir, what it's dealing with, it's dealing with the uh, sellers, and those sellers reside at fourteen bucks. Uh, so it's a bearish structured profile. So sellers really reside between thirteen fifty five and fourteen. Uh, price did close above the top of that profile on uh, February the first, but it, it gave it right back up the next day. When price was trading above that profile, Dan, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, um, Gary. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> very sorry about I that. I get it. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. Nope, nope. Uh, it had volume of uh, 69 million shares, and today you're only at 28. So it's pushing up into an area that it struggled with with 69 million. It doesn't look like to me that it's ready to break out and give you the so-called buy signal or maybe a change in trend signal. But $14, now it can close up, but I can't control what it's going to do. But if it did close, it doesn't have the volume to suggest that that's what's going to do, but it still could do it. And that's what you're really looking for, two consecutive closes above $14. And that's what the daily time frame chart shows us. I'm gonna pull over the other charts, white background charts. And here, you know, in looking for some kind of a bottom, the only thing that I would have would be an A to B equals CD to the downside. So that would be the pattern that's out here. I do actually see wave number G that took place. So that's a bottomy signal on January 24th out there. So now if you get to a consecutive close above 14, then you get the move to 1850. Seven. The weekly time frame here for Palantir, see if there's any kind of signals here, bottoming signal. I don't have anything here. So it's really the daily time frame that will be controlling things. And right now it's just a consolidation with inside that, that daily profile. So um, anything else that I can provide to you on Palantir? I think you did it. Um, see, I'm loaded up on a year out and two year out options at 30 and 40. Um, so I'm um, a big long term player in that. I've got a lot of stuff underneath even 30. But the point is, is that uh, those are my two biggest positions. Um, and um, I am um, looking for a short term play because they announce earnings next week um, and everything I've got going. Yeah. We'll see if yeah, I'm so right. so short term, unless price unless you get two consecutive closes about fourteen bucks, um, you know, then price might explore the bottom of that profile or the uh, uh, you know in the twelve sixty five level out there. So when are earnings? Which day do you know? Uh, Thursday, I believe. Thursday. So call back on Wednesday if you would, if you can, and we'll take a look at it and see how it's doing. The first instrument uh, that you're looking for is what was the ticker symbol on that? Uh, PLTR. No, no. The, uh, so we got we, we done PLTR. Oh, new What's skin. The, then is my baby. New skin. Any 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 N U S N U S N U S N U S. Okay. So now we take a look at uh, new skin out here. Uh, new skin is dealing with the top of its daily profile as well. And that's at fifty forty two. It's been trading above that for the last four trading sessions out here. So what it's telling me is that price wants to go tag a descending trend line that is formed on the weekly time frame. This week, that price would be at about the 53.20-ish type area. Um, next week, it would be slightly lower than that. If it can break through that, or maybe it does that interest session intra week, the top of its weekly profile would be 5467. As I take a look at just the daily time frame here for New Skin, as price was pulling back, um, I don't have a bottoming signal. But uh, and I don't have a bottom signal. And, and what with this also the daily time frame chart shows us is where the real fly in the financial ointment is. And it turns out it's the oscillator and change line. Now, it's green and that's beneficial if you get a close above that. And so what you're pulling for is a close above fifty one fifteen um, and really two closes above that. If you get that gear, the new skin should make its way to $54. I'm not saying that it won't now, but we can see how that green oscillator and change line has really acted as resistance. I'm not sure if you can see Tiger TV just yet, but but you will be able to see it when you do take a look at the show uh, if it gets reposted. So that's the real battleground for new skin for its daily time frame. Any questions there, Gear? 
If it's not reposted, I'll be emailing you. <laughs> okay. I want it. Um, the um, big thing is that they report earnings next Wednesday. So okay. that's what I'm kind of toying Call with. Uh, they, they don't. Their options are a lot more difficult because they're so wide. Um, they're just not that close to the um, reality, so to speak. <laughs> There's not yeah. enough of them. Well, well, do um, me a favor then. I mean, if to the extent that you can, just give me a call on Tuesday. Um, you know, we'll 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 take a look at it, see what the signals are at this stage here. But it does look like what this does want to try to do is get up into that descending trend line for the weekly time frame, okay. and perhaps even fifty four sixty seven. If it breaks that, because a lot of people are going to be listening to this, where would it go after that? Because we're expecting the people that are in the company. A lot of us are expecting some really stellar um, work, especially with this new collagen that we think is going to be um, formula. Going to be well, here's what in. you know. Here's what you know. And I, you can't. Here, here's what we know. The high that took place on January 7th, that was a bar following bar number nine of a TD9 count. So that's going to be your real resistance level. That's assuming price can get above the, and that level out there is 54.67. So 54.67 is the top of the weekly profile. 54.67 happens to be the TD9 count threshold level. And that's the price that would, that would that's the price you need to see price close above. Then there would be another battle for you. It would be $56 even, Stephen, which is the top of the weekly profile. If you clear that, uh, you know, then you're back off to the races to the upside. So you've got a couple of battles, 5460s. You got one before 5467. That's what you're dealing with right now at 5115. Then you've got 5467. And if you can clear that, then you're off to the races. And it often races still in that range where there's not a lot of, it's pretty much blue sky up until you get up into the um, close to 80s. Well, Right now, the answer would be yes, but there could be new profile information or something, you know, that uh, takes place between then and now. But right now, yes, it would be what it would be signaling to you, Gary, is a run for the highs from back in June of 2021 up to the 62 level. OK, got it. Perfect. That's exactly what I needed. Hey, you're the best. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. That was Gary in New Buffalo, Michigan. Thanks so much for the call. We've got another caller on the line. It's Rose. And uh, Rose, I don't know where you're calling from, but thanks so much for holding. How are you doing today? Do we still have Rose? Ah, that's a bummer. So what Rose wanted to take a look at is CCXI. And... Um, uh, so hopefully you're still listening here, Rose. I don't know what you were looking for, but I'll tell you what the charts are communicating to you. So this is Chemocentrics. Here's the ticker symbol. And price has been trading above the top of its daily profile yesterday and today. So, And that's a bearish structured profile, nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. So this is just higher price. Higher, in fact, let me get this going on my other charts while I narrate the black background charts. And we're going to break. Price is also trading above the top of its or the bottom of its weekly profile. So what this tells us, Rose, is that price should make its move to 34.65. You're above the top of the monthly, so you're above the monthly. You're above the uh, daily. Price should make its move to 34.65, and then perhaps 42.16. We'll finish looking at CCXI as soon as we get back from this break. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at ticker symbol CCXI for rows. And, uh, you know, the charts, the symbols themselves, it doesn't matter. We're agnostic to it because we're pattern traders. That's what we do during this 1 to 2 o'clock uh, time frame. Uh, so the instrument doesn't matter. The time frame doesn't matter. We apply the same tools. And here's the monthly charts. So we're going to start with the monthly chart, which uh, generated, first it generated a TD9 count. That took price right back to its oscillator and change line, as it's supposed to. It eventually held, and then price went up and made a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. In this case here, price was able to break through the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. And that it did it in a big way. This is the month of May in 2021. And it brought price all the way back to where it had broken out from. Now, it didn't get all the way down to the 768 level. It actually got down to a low of 953. And then it just made a counter trend rally. Now, I know that's kind of hard to believe because it's a counter trend move that went from that low up to a high of 42 bucks. So it seems like more of a counter trend. But from a technical standpoint, what price did was it made its way up to resistance, which was that oscillator and change line. And Gary and I would take a look at that oscillator and change line for a new skin. And it just shows you how important that oscillator and change line is. So right now, uh, the monthly chart, the week to the downside may have been done. But what you know here, Rose, is that you need to see two consecutive monthly closes above 35, 38 to say on a long term basis that this thing wants to go back and revisit those highs in the 70 area. The weekly time frame chart shows us right now that price is at resistance. And resistance here is the red oscillator and change line. I mean, it's right here, $30.29. Now, closing above that would be helpful because that would then suggest at least a further move higher could unfold or should unfold with a move up to 34.65, maybe even 42.16. The daily time frame chart, this shows a TD9 count pattern that is going to form today. That says, Rose, that today's high or tomorrow's high should be the high of the pattern and we should see a pullback. Now, if I take a look at the last two TD9 counts, really the last three TD9 count top, topping signals that have formed, each of those did top on bar number nine and we did see a pullback back to support. The last time, it was back to the profile, the bottom of the profile. The time before that, it was back to the bottom of the profile. The time before that, it was back to the bottom of the profile. So, Rose, <laughs> that says that in this case here, you could or should expect CCI XI to pull back to the bottom of its profile. However, this time it might be different. And the reason it might be different is because we should have two consecutive days above the top of a bearish structured profile. Now, a counter trend move, in other words, if this instrument is bullish, then where price will find support is not at the bottom of the profile, which is 2379, but instead at the center, 
which is 2657. So if you're looking to get in, you're looking to add to the position based upon the other TD9 counts and where that took price back to, uh, we'd say you'd be looking for at least or anticipate a move to the 2657 area. So, Rose, sorry that you couldn't hang on through that uh, through through that last call out there, but I hope that answers your question. If not, just email me, Steve, at TFN.com or give us a call back and we'll try to get you through as quickly as we can. We do have some questions that came in by uh, email. The first one from David in Tom Ball, Texas. And David wants to take a look at SCCO, which is Southern Copper. And uh, we're going to do that. But first, I'm just going to go take a peek at the uh, high-grade copper because the two certainly uh, trade, for the most part, in tandem. So what is high-grade copper? What's the doctor doing? And to take a look at what the doctor is doing here, we can see a breakout. Now, we say a breakout. We're taking a look at a breakout of descending trend lines for both the daily and the weekly time frame. So all of that looks pretty good, doesn't it? And it is pretty good, except that we can see the price is trading up into the top of a consolidation pattern. So the top of that consolidation pattern, you know, what's the exact high of that consolidation? What's the exact high that needs to get taken out to say the consolidation is broken? That would be a close of about $5.19. So that's the first thing out there. So we're just in a consolidation. We're up towards the top of that consolidation. And let's see if any of that's going to impact our thought process when we take a look at SCCO Southern Copper. So let's look at the three time frame charts out here. And what we can see is that price has run into a resistance zone, got up towards the top of its daily profile. That's at 69.85. Here we take a look at Southern Copper. We were talking about descending trend lines for Southern Copper, or for, for Dr. Copper, uh, that price had broken through. But in the case of Southern Copper, not the case. So now you can see the resistance level. It is that descending trend line on a weekly time frame. But let's read David's question. He may not even be interested in all this stuff and i've just been blabbering well hopefully not please take a look at support and resistance there we go for copper futures oh we did that hey dad like the way david thinks out here and secco so we've got that is secco setting up for an a to b equals cd up to the 7531 level so if Southern Copper can bust through this level. I'm going to give you the weekly A to B equals CD. I would think we should get the same thing. I would choose about the same swing points here. I'm going to use the conservative one. So, yeah, we'll use the conservative approach. And that conservative approach would say, I like take right from here. So, the A to B equals CD, and again, it's a conservative one. We might get slightly different numbers out here, but that's okay, is uh, 7531. What did you come up with? Oh, you came up with 7531. And folks, I didn't do this work ahead of time. So, uh, David, the answer to your question is, you're saying, is this going to form an A to B equals C to the upside? And I've got to say right now, the answer is no. And the answer is no until price is able to take out the descending trend line. And price is moving into that swing point, the swing point from January 17th that had 5.4 million shares. You're certainly moving into it with volume. So at least that high should get tested. 70.45, but that's the price that needs uh, that you need to see price close above in order to generate that A to B equals CD pattern. So I hope that helps you out with regard to support and resistance for both Southern Copper and for Dr. Copper. Dan from New York City writes in, and Dan wants to take a look at ticker symbol UPST. So let me get UPST. I believe that is Upstart Holdings or something along those lines out here. So let's get that fired up on all of our charts. Come on. There we go. Okay. And let's read the question. The question goes like this. Is now a good entry for Upstart? And does the gap from two days ago need to get filled? Um, well, here's what Upstart – so – Unless we have a really compelling reason to, say, buy resistance, um, and I don't know that we have that compelling reason, then the answer to your first question, is now a good entry for UPST? The answer is no, because price is sitting right at resistance. That is the top of its profile. The top of the profile is 116.39. Price is trading at 116.40 right now. So it's really sitting here at resistance. So I can't suggest that you do that. I can suggest that a place to an entry point might be 9806, the bottom of that profile. Don't know if you can't bust them up. 
price will try to bust them down. Now, the volume today is, is good, if I didn't mention that, 5.3 million, but it's going into 11 million shares. So it's light in the loafers out there as it goes into that swing point, as it goes into where the sellers are at. Let's take a look at the other charts out here for Upstart. Now, price is inside a bullish structured weekly profile, and this does suggest that it close above 110.61 this week should lead to a move to 154.93. So you've got that going for us. But if that's going to happen, we know that the top of this daily profile is going to fall or going to fail. And we're going to see a move above 120.75, a close above 120.75. Look, preferably on more than 11 million shares, sometimes you don't always get what you want. But in this case here, let's go back to the daily time frame for UPST. And in the case of UPST, what did this do? What did this do? Look, you've got another resistance level. The breakdown area is 120.97. I'm going to suggest you hold off on entering this until price pulls back to 89.62 to the 98.06 level. That's UPST. Great. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Back, uh, folks. So we're in the last segment here. Let's uh, pick up where we uh, began the uh, show, which was the 60-minute time frame charts, which are providing us with the best signals out here. We're looking at the equity futures. 
In the case of the ES Mini, so we've got another six minutes to go before this bar closes. The ES Mini closes below 45.2275. That'll be a chink in the armor to suggest lower price. In the NQ, it's 14770. Right now, price is trading above that level. The Dow price is trading below its breakout area of 35,406. And the Russell 2000 has tested and rejected the 2055 level. So we've got uh, no a unanimous decision out here. So what's that mean? It could just mean a lot of uh, sideways uh, chopping. But uh, look, we've got three minutes left, five minutes left, four minutes left out here. And price may get above the yes, may get back above that 4522. And if that's the case, all price was doing is testing its breakout area of support. Now, if price is going to move lower, and we don't have the signals here to suggest that just yet. But if we do get those signals, then where price is likely to head to are the daily oscillator and change lines. And for the ES Mini, again, that's going to be 4484. For the NQ, it's 14,587. For the Dow, it's 35,040. And for the uh, Russell, it's at the 1998 level. Now, if price were to close below a red oscillator and change line, that tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. That's a bearish condition. What that means is then we have to find the next areas of support. Well, from a daily time frame, di daily time frame perspective for the ES Mini, that'd be 43.96. It'd be 14.484 for the NQ. It would be 34.466 for the Dow, and it'd be 19.77 or 19.13 for the Russell 2000 out there. So, from a volume standpoint, let's switch charts here. See if I can do this relatively quickly. From a volume standpoint, let me uh, get to the S&P and its sectors just to see what's going on there. Give me a moment here, folks. I think it's all the way back here. S&P 500 in the sectors. Just looking for volume. Looking at the uh, volume. It's just uh, too hard to read here as we speak right now. Uh, folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home from two, 3 to 4. I'll be back with you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Have a terrific Thursday, folks. We'll see you again soon.